hearty welcome to new module of BioWorld. In the previous class, we have discussed about certain diseases caused by pathogens, some occupational diseases and nutritional deficiency diseases. Today, we are going to discuss about lifestyle diseases and genetic diseases. Do you know what is genetic disease? Before going to the details, let's see what is a gene. Gene is actually the hereditary factor of an organism. Where it is located? It is located in our cell. Let's have a look at the location of gene. Inside the cell, as we have studied in our previous classes, there is an organelle called nucleus. This nucleus has nucleolus, nucleoplasm and nuclear membrane. Apart from that, there is an important part called the genetic material, DNA. The DNA consists inside the chromosome. So, self-contained nucleus, inside the nucleus, chromosome, chromosome contains DNA, DNA contains the segments called genes. Genetic diseases. In order to understand genetic diseases in a better way, let's have a look on the location of genes. As you all know, the living cells are made up of cells. So we have trillions of cells in our body which perform definite functions. Inside the cell, there are many types of cell organelles. The most important one which act as cell center is the nucleus. So here you can see the cell center which is known as the nucleus. Inside the nucleus there are thin fiber like structure called chromatin reticulum. During cell division they condense to form chromosome. When we have a closer look of this chromosome these chromosomes are made up of fiber like structures called DNA. The DNA are made up of segments of genes. So genes are a set of instructions that determine what the organism is like, its appearance, how it survives and how it behaves in its environment. So, they determine both external and internal feature of an organism. They are made up of special type of proteins called deoxyribonucleic acid or simply DNA. So, where the gene located inside the DNA, where the DNA is seen inside the chromosome, chromosome is found inside the nucleus and nucleus is found in the cell. So let's see the features. Genes are the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. They are made up of DNA. They are found inside chromosome in the cell. It contains data needed to build and maintain cells and pass genetic information to the next generation. So let's have a recap of the location of gene. As we discussed earlier, the human body is made up of different types of cells. When we have a closer look inside the human cell, the major cell organelle which is known as cell center is the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, the genetic information is enclosed in chromosome. This chromosome has numerous filament like structure called DNA. The segment of DNA is called gene. So, genes are the basic functional unit which determine the character or the 
external as well as internal features of the organism. So, any defect in the gene may result in genetic diseases. So, let us see what is genetic disease. The defects in the genes that control the cellular activities cause genetic diseases. For example, hemophilia, sickle cell anemia. So, how the genetic disease cause? The defects in the genes that control the cellular activities result in genetic diseases. The some examples here we are going to discuss is hemophilia and sickle cell anemia. Now let us see what is hemophilia. Usually the blood clots with the help of plasma proteins. But when the genes that control the protein synthesis become defective, it results in a condition called hemophilia. So usually blood clotting is done with the help of plasma protein. So when the genes that control the protein synthesis become defective. So those genes which are actively participating in blood clotting become defective or non-functional. It results in a disease called hemophilia. The symptoms include excess loss of blood even through minor wounds. So, usually when a uh, wound occur it will uh, clot or the clotting will shown within few seconds uh, depending on the uh, intensity or the depth of the wound. It will clot within a seconds or extend up to a few minutes. But if the blood won't clot after a few minutes that indicates the hemophilia. Deficient protein can be injected artificially to acquire temporary relief. So, such people have to take care more in order to avoid wounds and injuries. Complete cure is not possible since it is a genetic disease. So, what is hemophilia? When the genes that control protein synthesis become defective, which protein? Protein which helps in blood clotting become defective that results in hemophilia. And what is the symptom? Excess blood loss happen even through minor wounds and there is a temporary relief is there. Uh, injecting the particular protein artificially can save the life of the person but all the time it is not possible. So, complete cure is not possible. Living with hemophilia, it is possible to live with hemophilia and manage the condition with following tips. Hemophiliacs should avoid physical activity that cause injury and result in bleeding. So, they should be very care uh, in order to prevent injuries and wounds. Avoiding blood thinning medications such as warfarin and heparin. So, medicine should be uh, consumed only with the prescription of doctor otherwise it may affects the blood clotting mechanism. It is best to avoid over the counter medicines like aspirin and ibuprofen. So, these are the painkillers we usually use in our daily life without the prescription of doctors. So, such people must be very cautious they will not take these type of painkillers since it affects their body. Clean your teeth and gums thoroughly. Get tips from your dentist on how to do this without making the gums bleed. So, as I said earlier, even a minor uh, bleeding may cause the uh, life in danger. Get tested regularly for blood infections and get the doctor's advice on hepatitis A and B vaccination. So, these are certain precautions they have to taken care. Hemophilia sometimes referred to as royal disease because it is affected the royal families of England, 
Germany, Russia and Spain in 19th and 20th centuries. Queen Victoria of England who ruled from 1837 to 1901 is believed to have been the carrier of haemophilia. So it is known as royal disease. Haemophilia is also known as royal disease. Next genetic disease is sickle cell anemia. RBC is usually by convex in shape but due to some genetic defects the shape of RBC got transformed. They got sickle shaped. So normal RBC shape got transformed into sickle shape. In the second picture you can see the microscopic view of a blood smear. Here you can see the blood cells RBC as round shaped cells in between small WBCs with dark or purple color can seen and some of the RBC got transformed into sharp shaped ends that is known as sickle shape. So sickle is a type of knife which we use for grass cutting and all. So the sickle shaped RBC is due to some genetic defects. So normally inside the blood vessels RBCs are having a uh, biconvex shape uh, but due to genetic defects the shape get transformed into sickle shape. So let us see what is sickle cell anemia. The structure of hemoglobin changes due to deformities in sequencing of amino acid. As you know hemoglobin is a red pigment seen in RBC which helps in transport of gases. Basically they are proteins. So proteins the basic components or the building blocks of proteins are amino acids. So what happened to this amino acid? The sequence of amino acid, the arrangement of amino acid has some alteration which result in a, a structural change of the hemoglobin and this hemoglobin causes the deformity of the shape of RBC. So as a result what happens? The shape of RBC changed to sickle shape and decrease the oxygen carrying capacity. The sickle shaped RBCs get collected in the blood vessels and block the flow of blood in them. The next disease we are going to discuss is cancer. As you know cancer is one of the most dreadful disease which is widely spreading in our society. Cancer is caused by uncontrolled divisions of cells and their spread to other tissues. So as you know cell divides usually by mitosis. We have studied in our 9th standard. Isn't it? So during the cell division the cell has a control over the division. But during cancer what happens is that the normal cell get transformed into cancerous cells when the control system of the cell division fails. So when the system control fails that result the normal cells get transformed into cancerous cells. So normally cell divides using mitotic division. So a single cell divide into 2, 2 again divided into 4 like that and they start growing and begin to perform its function. But during cancer what happens is that the cell undergo division in a disorder way or in an irregular way. Here you can see the difference between the cell division in a normal cell as well as a cancerous cell. So in the first line you can see a cell divides normally through the process of mitosis. After division they grow in size, enlarge in size and they start to perform its function. But what happens to the cells that control, that, that lose the control for mechanism of cell division? Many cells 
that continue to grow and divide which vary in shape and size and the nucleus is larger and darker than the normal cell and this abnormal number of chromosome arranged in disorganized fashion and finally the cluster of cells without a boundary will be formed and later they spread to other parts too so the uncontrolled division of cell which spread from one part of the body to the next is known as cancer so here you can see an array of normal cell and a cluster of cancerous cell these cancerous cells are together known as tumors so tumors are of different types uh, some tumors spread from from one part of the body to the next which is very dangerous and they cause the spreading of cancer very easily now let's find out the reason for cancer environmental factors smoking radiations for example uv radiations x ray etc then viruses hereditary factors all contribute to cancer how can we diagnose the cancer so many sophisticated technologies are make use for the diagnosing the disease in the early stage itself ct scan bone scan mri ultrasound scan x ray biopsy blood test are the major diagnosing method diagnosing means how to find out the cancer now let's move on to the various treatments related to cancer surgery that is the removal of the cancerous cells as i said earlier it's a lump of tissues or a tumor like structure which can be removed through surgical operations that is surgery next one radiotherapy intense radiations are used for burning and destroying the cancerous cells chemotherapy quite common nowadays strong chemicals are used in order to kill the cancerous cells so chemotherapy uses strong chemicals to kill the cancerous cells next one hormone therapy some types of cancer are fueled by your body's hormones for example breast cancer prostate cancer so removing those hormones from the body or blocking their effects may cause cancer cells to stop growing next one bone marrow transplantation a bone marrow transplant allows uh, the doctor to use high doses of chemotherapy to treat the cancer it may also be used to replace the diseased bone marrow then next one is immunotherapy it is also known as biological therapy uh, in which the body's immune system is used to fight cancer cancer can survive unchecked in your body because your in immune system doesn't recognize it as an intruder so immunotherapy can help your immune system to see the cancer cells and attack it next one is uh, cryoablation uh, cryoablation is actually a treatment which kills cancer cells with the cold so during cryoablation a thin uh, needle like uh, device is inserted through the skin and directly into the cancerous tumor and a gas is pumped into uh, through the needle in order to freeze the tissue so then the tissue is allowed to thaw that means heating up and the freezing and thawing process is repeated several times during the same treatment session in order to kill the cancerous cell so it's a type of treatment to kill the cancer cell using 
cold or temperature variation methods. Next one is uh, radio frequency ablation. This treatment uses electrical energy to heat cancer cells causing them to die. So during uh, such radio frequency ablation doctor use uh, guides a thin needle through the skin or through an incision uh, and into the cancerous tissue. So this high frequency energy passes through the needle and causes the surrounding tissue to heat up thereby killing the cells. So here electrical energy is used to destroy the cancerous cells. Now how can we prevent cancer and save our life very very important. Do not use smoke or use any form of tobacco very very important tobacco is very poisonous uh, chemicals which cause damage to your entire system. Enjoy a healthy diet get immunized especially hepatitis B and HPV vaccine avoid too much sun use sun protection reduce indoor and outdoor air pollution be physically active limit alcohol maintain healthy body weight and try to be very positive minded so next topic is lifestyle diseases as a result of change in food habits lack of physical exercise mental stress consumption of alcohol drug abuse consumption of tobacco result in a plethora of lifestyle diseases first example is diabetes variety of diabetes are there we have discussed in our earlier sessions type 1 type 2 gestational diabetes so all these are due to imbalance or change in lifestyle so type 1 may cause due to viral or bacterial infection chemical toxins within our food then unidentified component causing autoimmune reaction then type 2 may be result due to obesity increasing age or bad diet and gestational of course related to uh, family history or from polycystic ovary PCODs and having uh, the size of baby in an abnormal way. So all these diabetes are mainly due to uh, change in lifestyle or change in food habits. Next disease is fatty liver quite common nowadays even among in children also. So consumption of lot of fatty food items and lack of exercise add the fatty liver in a very adverse way. So side effects of medications especially medications without the prescription of doctor combining different streams of medicines together for example while consuming homeo medicines uh, the same time the person is consuming ayurvedic or allopathic without the proper prescription of a doctor. So as a result of side effects of medication, fats in blood that is over consumption of fatty food, then diabetes, then genetic inheritance or related to family history, then obesity or overweight or rapid weight loss. Sometimes we take uh, uh, unscientific way of practicing the fasting or diet restriction in order to lose the weight or avoiding carbohydrate food and consuming more fatty and protein food also result in fatty liver. Next disease is stroke which is affected mainly in brain. Uh, overweight there also obesity is the villain then faulty food habits the fast food and the junk food then consuming alcohol drugs and all sort of chemicals in the food then diabetes genetic reasons all add up the cholesterol level in our body which badly affects our brain resulting in a condition called stroke. 
Next one hypertension, we usually call it as high BP or high blood pressure, high salt intake, alcohol consumption, tobacco use, lack of exercise, stress or tension, faulty food habits, obesity or the overweight, hereditary factors, menopause and pregnancy. These are the major reason for hypertension. The last two menopause and pregnancy is commonly among the females. The others are common for both genders. So again there comes the importance of a healthy diet, stress free, then importance of exercise, all those add up to the uh, weightage of uh, maintaining the blood pressure in a normal way. Next common disease is heart attack. As you know heart is a pumping organ. As a result of excess amount of fat in our body, uh, cholesterol may cause a deposition inside the blood vessel which in turn affects the heart. So here you can see inside the blood vessel the deposition of cholesterol which is accompanied with the uh, plaque so that the diameter of the blood vessel decreases. So it cause obstruction in the flow of blood as a result small internal bleedings may happen which may result in clumping of blood and it affects our heart. Here you can see the deposition of cholesterol on the side of artery which uh, combined with insoluble substance and they turn to plaque and the arterial wall diameter decreases and thereby obstructs the blood flow. Here you can compare the three situation. First one is the normal blood vessels which allow the smooth flow of blood. In the second case the uh, deposition of cholesterol in the artery which causes uh, decrease in diameter of blood vessel cause the obstruction and thereby as a result of deposition of more and more cholesterol in the inner wall of the artery it causes damage of the lining thereby causes internal bleeding and clot. So these are the reason for heart attack. Now let's see the lifestyle disease at a glance. Diabetes it is mainly due to deficiency of insulin or its malfunctioning. Fatty liver due to deposition of excess fat in the liver. Stroke Reason is rupture of blood vessels in brain, block of blood flow, hypertension or high blood pressure, decrease in diameter of arteries due to deposition of fat and finally heart attack, block of blood flow due to deposition of fat in coronary artery which is the artery closer to the heart which carry blood to the heart. So heart attack hypertension, stroke, fatty liver and diabetes are common lifestyle diseases. Now let us see the dreadful effects of smoking. Smoking can cause cancer almost anywhere in your body. So in this illustration you can see the spread of cancer as a result of the bad habit smoking. It may affect in any part of our body. As you know the whole body is made up of cell. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of our body. So the chemicals, the poisonous chemicals present in the tobacco affects or alter the function of the cell which may result in cancer. So mouth, throat, esophagus, voice box, lungs and the respiratory tract, then leukemia that is blood cancer, then liver, stomach, 
kidney, pancreas, urinary bladder, uterus, colon, rectum. So in any part of the body it can cause tremendous change and result in a cancerous condition. So the cigarette which is the villain contain dreadful chemicals. So cigarette is usually made from tobacco. Different forms are available. More than 7000 chemicals in tobacco smoke. See 7000 chemicals. Out of them 250 are known to be harmful or carcinogen that means cancer causing. It contains toxic metals like beryllium, hazardous gases like carbon monoxide and ammonia, metallic elements like chromium. Now let's see the health hazards of cigarette smoking affects the three major organs brain which result in stroke and addiction to nicotine addiction means a temptation to use it again and again and finally the person cannot survive without it so addiction to nicotine and stroke are the two effects of smoking to the organ brain coming to lungs or the respiratory system lung cancer bronchitis and emphysema so these are the various disorders related to respiratory system then how it affects our heart it, it leads to hypertension loss of elasticity of arteries decrease in functional efficiency of the heart now let's move to another topic animal diseases pathogens also affects animals and cause various diseases for example bacteria causes disease in animals like anthrax and inflammation of udder usually common among cattle and virus cause another disease in cattle called foot and mouth disease so two pathogens which is common in animal world and cause certain diseases bacteria causes anthrax and inflammation of udder whereas virus cause foot and mouth disease moving to the next topic that is plant disease bacteria causes disease in paddy and brinjal for example blight disease in paddy and wilt disease in brinjal virus cause mosaic disease in peas and tapioca bungee top of banana that is in plantain the fungus cause quick wilt in pepper plant and bud rot in coconut so different pathogens can cause diseases in plants and animal too apart from humans so children today we have discussed about various lifestyle diseases and genetic diseases. To a certain extent, we can prevent the lifestyle diseases by changing our faulty food habits as well as our routines. So, it is better to have a better health than consuming the medicines or taking medication while getting these type of diseases. So, here I am concluding. Thank you.